Joining us today on the Raw live stream is none other than Mr. Johnny Cupcakes Earl. Now, there's a couple of things I know about Johnny. So let's see. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's been hustling since he's, I don't know, in his early teens. He founded Johnny Cupcakes in 2001, and they make all kinds of things. T-shirts, shorts, sweaters, jewelry, undergarments, and pins. You know, hashtag merch. 2005, he opened his first store. I believe the flagship store is in Newberry Street, which we're going to take a look at. And he was able to do five figures of sales in the very first day with hundreds of people lining up around the block. How does somebody even do that? And for t-shirts even? That's incredible. And he has a fascination with vintage typewriters, as far as I can tell. I want to ask him about that. And he's been doing the public speaking thing. Now check this out, you guys. He's a man after my own heart because he's not afraid to throw out his fashion sensibility. Look at him in the pink polka dot shirt and the blue striped pants. He's pretty crazy. So this guy's a rebel, top to bottom. And let's take a look at the store. As you can see on the store here, he claims he's the world's first t-shirt baker and I believe that's a pretty safe claim. And once you step into the store, you can see how the imagination of this man has permeated the entire customer and user experience. And when you walk in, there are these two giant ovens and it tells you there's more to explore. Just give a tug on the right door. Pretty cool. So when I see something like this, it makes me think of the things that I would experience in Disney, like elaborate set design and crafting an entire user journey and telling a story. And this is going beyond just buying something in the store. So here we go. We're going to open the door here. We step into the shop and you can see this is unlike most experiences you've had in the retail space. There's a bunch of ovens lined up on the door, cool neon sign. And it looks like from first appearances, we're stepping into some kind of bakery. Now I found out about Johnny and I watched some of his videos uh, when he does public speaking. And he talks about how he went through the expense of buying ovens and, and racks that you would normally associate with a bakery instead of just setting up something really cheap and doing the shelves because he really believes in the entire user experience. So here you can see, here's a close up shot of some of the t-shirts and they're laid out on baking trays. Very cool, super creative. And you can see that the creativity doesn't stop here. We'll get into the packaging here. The, the shirts themselves are packaged up in takeout containers that you would have for cupcakes. And they're wrapped with tissue paper. And there's a whole look and vibe and feel to it. The pins are put inside cupcake trays. Of course, the theme runs up and down. And look into some of the work that they've produced over there at Johnny Cupcakes. He's been able to tap into the zeitgeist. We can see here, there's a reference here to Infinity Gauntlet or something like that, the Infinity Mitt, legalized cupcakes. Somebody looks like they're rolling up a joint there. And then there's a bunch of parodies that he's done uh, in terms of um, Bathing Ape or the North Cake. I love that one. Very clever. And then there's the, <clears throat> what I presume to be licensed merch with the Transformers and the DC characters, but we'll get into that. We'll see if the, this is done in collaboration or is this one of those parodies that you can get away with too. So before we do that, I'm gonna ask Erica to please roll the titles. All right, welcome back, you guys. Joining me from uh, is uh, where are you? Where's the where are you in right now? I am in Boston on two seventy nine Newberry Street at the Johnny Cupcakes flagship shop. Thank you so much, first of all, for being patient. We probably should let all our fans know how to watch this episode right now. So if you haven't done so already, um, I probably should do this on Twitter or something. But let them know that we're on youtubecom slash c slash the future is here slash live and this will be live for a while until it becomes a recorded video but right now we're streaming live so johnny i have a bunch of questions for you but first of all thank you thank you so much for being patient with us you seem to have like a really um like your finger on the pulse of what's happening in pop culture and the creativity it just never ends as the more I, research i do about you and the work that you've done uh, the more impressed i am now we want to let everybody know tuning in live today that we have a little sweet surprise in store for them and uh, I want to encourage people to let's, let's do something creative and let's do something fun. Erica, sweet surprise. Thank you. All right. Uh, so first, you guys, if you want to look up Johnny, he's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. It's Johnny Cupcakes. Obviously, that's not his real name, but that's how maybe a lot of the world knows him. And we're going to give you this hashtag. And Johnny, tell us, 
tell them what they need to do in order to win something cool from you today. The hashtag is Johnny Cupcakes Live. Make sure you use that because yes. Johnny will be looking at um, whatever it is he's about to challenge you with. Go ahead, Johnny. What are we going to do? Yep. So I'm going to need you to uh, stand in a bathtub um, <laughs> you, with your clothes on. And, okay, good. Clarified. And we need to know that you are actually in this live stream video. So you will be taking a selfie of yourself. Um, maybe you might be at work and there's not a bathtub. You could stand by a sink. We'll accept a sink. And um, just a very serious, like, uh, you know, photo shoot as if you were a kid at school. And just be very serious in the bathroom uh, with the live stream behind you so we know that you were a part of this. I'm going to search the Johnny Cupcakes Live hashtag on Instagram. And I'm also going to search it on Twitter. And I'm going to choose a few random people. Obviously, the more creative, the more funny, uh, the, the better. But um, we'll choose a few random winners uh, later on, and we will announce those, or I will direct message you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so you have to have a serious look. So Johnny suggested maybe the fist on the chin. Give us your best look, and it has to kind of it has to be in the bathroom so we know that you took it today, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you, bonus points if you wrap your arms and face with toilet paper and look like <laughs> a mummy. By the way, I'm doing this live stream at my retail shop right now, and we are open. So there is a customer inside who walked in to me saying, go in your bathroom and take photos of yourself with toilet paper in your face. <laughs> So our um, customer is going to be walking past us as we're live streaming right now? No. So we have two entrances. Oh, one okay. is through the giant secret oven, which mm -hmm. brings you down the wall of the great wall of ovens. These normally open and close at different times and shoot steam out. Um, but for the sake of the video, we're going to uh, turn that off. And then we have a side <laughs> and customers are going to come through. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to open it up with some questions for you. <laughs> one thing I wanted to know from you is, when, when you're making ideas, how do you figure out which ones to make? That's a really good question. So <clears throat> we are a little bit different than most uh, brands or t-shirt brands. A lot of brands uh, release products seasonally and they sell to stores. We do not sell to retail stores and we release products weekly, sometimes twice a week, which means that's a lot of ideas we need to come up with. I say we because it's not me, it's my customers, it's my team, and we all work together and, and try to plan a, a kind of a Willy Wonka style schedule for the year. So we know every year we're gonna come up with our baseball theme shirts, our basketball theme shirts, uh, our football theme shirts. We know we're gonna do our Valentine's Day shirts, our St. Patrick's Day shirts. Basically, anytime we have a reason to celebrate, we are gonna do that, but through the art of t-shirts. And if we have time, we're gonna remix that even further. So to give you an example, uh, last year for St. Patrick's Day, we did a pot of gold cupcake and crossbones t-shirt. And I chose to take a financial risk by giving those away for free. So the only way you could get that t-shirt was to physically find me like a leprechaun or a pot of gold. Mm. And, I, and I would illegally hide in people's bushes around <laughs> back Bay in Boston. And people came out and found me. And the more weird it is, the better. Mm. But even though I took a financial loss giving those away for free, it would be physically impossible for you to not share the story of how you got that limited edition t-shirt if you found a little bearded dude in a stranger's bush. Um, so <laughs> we, we release a lot of stuff and, and we pull inspiration from everywhere, from, our, from a lot of nostalgia. Um, uh, you know, we do a lot of reactive marketing. So if somebody's winning a championship, if Drake has a hotline bling song, we need to do a cupcake bling t-shirt in 24 hours. Um, but we know we're gonna, we, we always know that we're gonna work with the seasons, the sports, the holidays. And then if we run out of ideas, you know, we can always take a pattern and put it in a t-shirt um, I'll put it in, in our logo, package it up a little bit differently. Uh, right now we're toying around with scented ink. So that's a, something we're very excited about. But, um, but yeah, that, that's, um, that's, that's the deal. How many of those part. leprechaun shirts did you make? And how many people found you in their bush? Uh, that's a very funny question that you ask. Uh, I would say we probably made about 30 t-shirts and I would say uh, maybe 14 people have found me in bushes <laughs> in Boston. And one person found me in an ice cream shop in uh, Los Angeles because I, I, sometimes I'll bring the shirts with me. So there's still some of these shirts, but I have to act like a leprechaun or, or a leprechaun 
hunter and find these because my office is very, very messy. <laughs> Okay, so there's still a few of these coveted t-shirts left, so when you there announce are. it, you'll hide in the bush somewhere. I uh, will. That's got to be a little strange it, in itself. And, and it uh, make, You know, it makes work fun for me, yeah. and it makes, it makes it fun for our customers. And then for the past 17 years of being in business, um, we've spent little to no money on traditional advertising. It's mostly been these, uh, these bizarre adventures through t-shirts, whether it's through the packaging, the storytelling, uh, any way we can make memories around merchandise. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, our customers are always saying, hey, I, I got this shirt from this weird guy in a bush dressed up as a leprechaun, or I, I had to wait in line to buy this. We did a breakfast themed t-shirt once that you can only buy during breakfast hours. And, uh, and if you showed up in the afternoon, we would not sell it to you, even if you drove from New York City to Boston. Um, because it's against company policy. So we gave out real breakfast with every t-shirt purchase and um, it was fun. It, it made it really fun. I'm looking for that slide right now in case I'm not making eye contact. Oh, it's, it. oh, it's oh, right here. I got fine. it. So here we go. You know, you get a lot of flack for this. Uh, I think you shared this story about how people are like, what kind of weird place is this? And for all intents and purposes, people think it's a bakery where you can get something and they go in and they can see on, on your window, it says no sugar, no carbs, no fat. And then you yep. you finally decided, okay, I'm gonna make a, a breakfast special T-shirt where you buy the shirt and you get breakfast. That's yeah, we bananas. get a real breakfast. Yep, it, it's very uh, confusing to the people who are upset at us for not selling real food. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot. We have a lot of bad reviews on the food websites because people will pay to park and they'll walk in and and, and they'll look for cupcakes at Johnny Cupcakes. And if you know, if I want to give them a hard time, I'll say, well, you know, the Apple Store does not sell fruit. Why should Johnny Cupcakes sell uh, cupcakes? That's a but valid we, argument. <laughs> you know, but we, we did sell cupcakes once on April Fool's Day, and we hid all of our T-shirts. And we, uh, we really tricked our own customers that day. Um, and it was a blast. And we actually sold a lot, sold a lot of cupcakes. So I, I might open a store across the street called Johnny's T-shirts that only sells cupcakes someday. <laughs> I think there's something about you that's, seems very mischievous and likes to like play around with people's expectations and maybe in that surprise you build a really strong following so it sounds to me like you have fanatical fans who are customers uh but probably you do really poorly on yelp for food reviews correct correct so while we're on the topic of who your customers are i'm just curious is if you've been able to identify any kind of patterns like who shows up who waits in line who's hunting you in the bushes. Who is this person? You know, if you ever have a chance to attend the Johnny Cupcakes event uh, at, at my shop, you'll you'll see people from all walks of life. We have customers who are five years old. We have customers who are eighty-five years old. Um, when I was setting up to start the brand, I was in a hardcore metal band, and I would sell shirts out of my suitcase. I was in a band called On Broken Wings, and I played samples and put in weird sound effects in between heavy metal breakdowns. But when I sold the t-shirts, most of the people who were buying them were tattooed guys in bands. And when I opened my first retail store in Boston, it changed everything because now my customers were people from all walks of life. And, I, and I'd never wanted to call my brand streetwear or um, I, I didn't really want to give us a label because I wanted to be playful and, and something that a family can come in and, and enjoy. So. Mm -hmm. You will see people from all walks of life. Uh, you know, we've but had is a there few... any kind of like a, a theme, a common thing that puts them all together? I, I think people who collect things mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. like myself, I, I, I'm a collector. I've, I've collected stamps when I was four years old. I collect vintage typewriters now. I collect vinyl records. Um, I've always collected things. So when I have ideas or when I bring up ideas to my team or, or the people we collaborate with, uh, it's important to have a collectability aspect to it, whether a t-shirt's numbered. Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry about the toilet paper talk earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, whether, whether it's uh, limited edition or numbered or comes in a funny package, I, I, I want them to feel that excitement that I used to feel when I'd open up a box of cereal and there was a physical prize at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And now I have type in a 30 case sensitive number on, on, uh, online and they're making money off of me from their marketing and I might not win a prize in a box of cereal. So 
I, I do see collectors, basically people who love going to Comic-Con, they probably like Johnny Cupcakes or people who uh, collect sneakers. We have some of those customers, but we also have kids that are in school. We have a lot of business people, folks from marketing backgrounds that just like the story mm -hmm. or read about it in a, as a case study and they ventured off to the store and maybe they tricked their family and friends and went along with Frank. But um, yeah, it's all over the place. Um, but the one commonality I would say collectors, I would say fam, I would say good people, if yep. that makes sense. Yep. I, I've seen some customers of other brands that, you know, um, try to be a little too cool and mean. Everyone here is a bit welcoming. Um, on the inside tag of all of my t-shirts, it says, uh, I don't know if you could see it. I, I try not it. to. Yeah. <laughs> my body. Uh, it says, do, <laughs> it says, do more of what makes you happy. And um, on the inside tag of our underwear that we saw, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we, we push positive messages. We push mischievous uh, and just an overall family friendly aspect to the brand because it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. I like that there's a sense of whimsy and irony in, in the designs that you do. And I think since you're releasing shirts weekly or bi-weekly, as you say, you're very yep. reactive. You're on top of what's going on in pop culture and just tapping into all that stuff. So if you're a pop culture fan, if you're into Transformers or DC or Marvel uh, geeks, if you will, I mean, I'm part of the culture myself. You're going to feel that connection and that bond. Now, I have to ask you this other question. Typically, yeah, how much do the shirts go for? Um, our T-shirts typically go for $36. Mm -hmm. And... The reason is we make them in such small batches. And when I say small, I mean, uh, we might make uh, 75 t-shirts. We might make 200 t-shirts. We don't sell them anywhere except our own stores. And we put a lot of time and, and money and resources into the packaging, the storytelling, the retail environment um, to, to make it special. We use very soft t-shirts, soft cotton. Uh, sometimes we'll throw in random prizes in people's online orders or orders at the shop. You might get a vintage uh, Ghostbusters card or new kids on the block. Uh, just something to make <laughs> someone feel like a kid. My, my goal is always to make my customers feel like it's their birthday. And uh, we try to do so through, through those things. Sometimes our more limited edition shirts. So uh, last week we, we released a couple t-shirts. And then a few days later, we released the same design on a different colorway. And the only way you could get it was on our official eBay page, the eBay, Johnny Cupcakes eBay vault. And uh, it was just a different color, but we were able to sell it for $15 more. It was about $45, $50. And that was a, a special gift for the collectors. There's some people that want when nobody else has. And, and that is a, a difficult thing to struggle with too, because I want to make a limited edition brand, but I'm also employing my mom and my dad and my sister and, and, and my friends, and I want to make sure that I could still do that. So having that balance really, really helps with the brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, gosh, I got, I, I'm tracking, I'm trying to track the comments here while you're talking. So I, I, I'm sure. a little distracted, lots of love here. So I'm going to see what YouTube is sharing with you right now. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> Andrew McGee has asked, uh, do you take credit cards? It seems pretty straightforward. We do take credit cards, we take Amazon Pay, and uh, we're gonna start looking into Bitcoin at some point. I don't know um, <laughs> too much about it. All I know is I can't go a day without hearing, hearing about it, but so why not? I think it would, it would be appropriate to make a limited edition Bitcoin uh, t-shirt or just make our own currency, probably physical, because I, I, like, I, I love the smell of print, I love the smell of stickers. I'm a very, I get in trouble when I buy CDs still because I just, it's nostalgia to me. I, I like. That. I'm the same I'll, way. I am the know. same way. And I just want to attest to something. Uh, Johnny was talking about the quality of the shirts and how they're soft. And I am wearing one right now. And you can see that. Look at that. Boom. And they are super soft. And the cut is, it's a, it's a good cut because uh, I like a slimmer cut and, and it's more yep. fashionable. So I think that's another part of the DNA of the brand that you have created in terms of like people wanting to, to have a little fun with their fashion and mixing it up. I can see yep. that in some of the more avant-garde wardrobe choices that you've made. And even the way you come across in your photos, how like you're, you're yelling or you're having fun or smiling or doing something crazy hair, crazy beard. It, it just seems to come ooze out of you and your brand. So kudos to you on that. Thank you. It's um, I, I think the best thing that I've done 
ever since starting the brand is just being transparent and and having fun and bring pe bringing people along the ride. I, I think it's life's too short to be very serious. Mm. Um, you know, I, I know as a consumer, you know, if I have to go buy, uh, let's say refrigerators for my shop or a pop-up shop, and I have to choose between 200 companies that are selling the same refrigerators, the same distributors selling the same thing. If I just saw one of these websites who was selling the same refrigerator, if they told me that they were a family run brand or if they posted photos of their employees as little kids, it's something that made me laugh. I would feel this human connection with them and I wouldn't feel like I was feeding money to this machine. I, I would be excited. I'd want to support a company. So uh, to anyone that's tuning in, I, I would say whatever business you start, whether it's a restaurant, a design agency, a t-shirt brand, uh, whether you're a wedding photographer, be transparent, tell your story, your history, and, and bring people you know, along, along that ride with you. Great. So I'm going to read some, some questions and comments. Some people are already getting yeah. really antsy. I just want to first uh, yeah. <laughs> say hello to Hasif, who's tuning in from Singapore. It's 3 a.m. there, so he stayed up really late for this, and he's, like, he's so excited. Thank what you, else? my friend. Mm -hmm. Roka says, asks, why is that neon sign flipping flipped? It's because we're... Is it through a camera that it's flipped? or? Oh, it's flipped. Is it back? Are they reading it backwards? Are yeah, you guys I think it's coming it? backwards right now. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, Johnny. Flip it. This is no, my no. right hand. See, see, you guys, you understand that the whole camera thing. Just relax, everybody on the internet. It's fine. Just relax. It's not flipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right because your logo <laughs> is symmetrical on your shirt, so we can't tell. Does this say Johnny Cupcakes the correct way? No, it says it flipped. So you want to flip your camera? Oh, if you want to do that, we can. I mean, you guys can on your end. All right, so we need to flip it on my end. Let me flip this around. Where did we flip it before, Dave? Oh, where is it? Kim is saying, this is really dope. Somebody else is saying, you're the, the coolest guy out there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's, here's a question coming in from Ivan. He's asking, where oh, did the brand... Okay. Sorry, guys, hang in there. I'm going to fill in some dead air for, for Johnny. In case yeah. you guys are wanting... That's flipped the wrong way. <laughs> now you guys are upside down. One more time. This is cool, you guys. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to the fun house. Johnny Cupcake's fun house. I just put it upside down. Um, okay. Not, we just put a mirror. How? Okay. Oh, uncheck it. There we go. Woo! Right. You got it. You got it. It's all good now. Now it says Johnny Cupcake's in the back. Uh, this is the real Johnny Cupcake's. You did not know that person before. All, all right. right. Let's take some more questions. Yeah, so there's uh, somebody saying hello from Trinidad. <laughs> there's people from all over the place. Trinidad, how are you? Singapore, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, some, some of our customers stay up really late because normally we have our t-shirt releases every Friday at noon uh, Eastern Standard Time. So we have some customers in Australia who are just waking up or going to bed. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny, based on when I post something on Instagram or, or my Twitter, I will, I'll, I'll click on the people who are their profiles and I'll see, well, that's crazy. That person's from, you know, from South Africa Yeah. or from this place or not South Africa. They're only, they're not that far behind us, but anyways. So I have another question for you. How, how many shirts do you print in these releases? How limited are they? Uh, our t-shirts could be as limited. Uh, some of the more limited ones are, we'll make like 50 or 45 mm -hmm. t-shirts. Um, but for a normal batch, it could be between 75 and, and 200 t-shirts. That's a lot of energy and effort into selling only 200 shirts. Tell it me is. about the business <laughs> mindset on that. Yes, um, it is. We do have some classics. So for instance, the shirt you and I are wearing, mm -hmm. uh, these are the number one seller. So we'll always make these in different colors. We'll make pocket print ones. And then my Boston store has in-store exclusives that you can only buy if you physically come here. Because I had a problem when I first started. I had customers who did not want to pay to park and travel out to the store. They're like, why? I'm just going to buy it in my sweatpants online. Right. And I was, I was like, oh, yeah, are you? Well, we're going to make a special shirt that you can only get in the store. And in fact, we're going to give you breakfast if you come out and get that shirt. But if you're late, you're not getting either of those things. Mm. So, um, so there's shirts in here that play around with Boston's pop culture and, and uh, really 
makes tourists exciting, excited because a lot of people who come to our store are, are one-time buyers um, that are just visiting the city for a baseball game or to, or to go to college here. Um, Boston's a, a pretty small city, but it packs a punch. And uh, I think, you know, we've been in business for 17 years and I've had the store here. We're coming up on 12 years of this location. And um, it, it was definitely a very um, scary financial risk to open up here. Um, but uh, looking at our online customers and looking at how quickly new people come to this city, uh, I, I don't know the exact statistic, but New England as a whole, I feel as if it's around a million students um, with, with New Hampshire, Maine, and all of Massachusetts, these students that are coming and going. And when they go back home with their Johnny Cupcake shirts, they're like planting the seeds in, in their respective countries or, or, or cities. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but, uh, you know, but I, our shirts are yeah, pretty limited. I, I, I like that concept that, that you, you only sell certain things at the physical store at that particular location because yeah. as brands become more ubiquitous, it doesn't matter if you're in Singapore, or if you're in California or Japan, you can get the same stuff. So it takes the the whole fun of finding something, discovering something, and, and kind of being rewarded for your travels and your adventure, it takes it away. It so I, I like that, that if you're in Boston and you want to get a Johnny Cupcakes exclusive design, you're going to go there and it's going to be a very different experience than it would be anywhere else. Yep. And you on the flip side, though, on the flip side, we will do that on the website. So the local people who say, I'm not going to buy online, I could just go to the store, we'll have some online exclusives too. That's very cool. Okay, so there's a couple other questions, and then I have my own questions I got to get to. Yeah, but yeah, everybody cool. wants to know, where did the brand name Johnny Cupcakes come from? Can you tell us that story? Yes, so, uh, so I'm part Portuguese, so my name is actually Johnny Cupcakes, and there's a couple dots above the U. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. I, I like to not around. <laughs> I, um, I was working at a record shop called Newberry Comics, and... While I was working there, I was in my hardcore metal band and I was receiving all these funny nicknames at work. My goofy coworkers would call me Johnny Come Lately if I was late for work. Uh, Johnny Appleseed came out of nowhere. And Johnny Cupcakes was another nickname. And while I was getting t-shirts made for the band that I was in, I thought it would be funny to make a t-shirt advertising a bakery that didn't even exist. And I wore that shirt to work. And all of these slightly miserable customers that never made eye contact with me, they started laughing and saying, what is Johnny Cupcakes? Is that a bakery? Where can I get a t-shirt? My brother's name's Johnny. My sister loves to bake. And before I knew it, I, I was um, selling these many t-shirts to strangers. And when I'd sell 12 t-shirts, I'd take that money and I'd make 24 t-shirts. And when I'd sell that, I'd take that money and make more. And I also, um, I, I've never, partied before so I have saved a lot of money by not drinking and, and going out or when I do go out with my friends I'll I'll try to bring some of my t-shirts and do a pop-up shop or or a brown bag of Capri Sun juice drinks nobody heckles me for for not drinking. but but those little things help help my brand grow and and it's really you know making time for it the more you put in the more you get back and um and and you know making sure you're not wasting your money on, on, on things. If you're really serious to start, about starting a business, if you're not putting that time and money into it, someone else is going to do it quicker and better. Um, so I, I was, while my friends were at parties with cute girls, I was at, at you know, craft fairs with cute old ladies hustling my <laughs> t-shirts or, or whatever little business I had at the time. I, I had many little crafts before Johnny Cupcakes, but um, I was a magician at one point. I, I did magic at birthday parties. I sold glow sticks around 4th of July, and I would say to people's parents, hey, if you don't want your kids, you know, blowing off their fingers, you could buy a glow stick. And I would, you know, buy them from the Oriental Trade and Company catalog, which is like the Bible of entrepreneurship. And, and I would, um, yeah, that was another one. I sold Tupperware at one point, which was a very bizarre adventure. I, I've just always loved that process. I'm not even the goal of, hey, let's let's make a bunch of money. And you need to do that to survive and to grow your business. But the most, I get so bummed out when a project is finished because the most exciting part is being under pressure and coming up with these ideas and collaborating with different people and, and reaching out to your customers and physically pounding the pavement um, to, to build those relationships. Um, it's it's really the, the best part about it. It's like physically putting a puzzle together. Mm. Hey, Erica, I noticed we're getting a little lag here. I don't know if it's Johnny's connection or ours. Are you are you hearing that, Erica? Uh, yeah. I'm noticing a little lag. I think on... it's on his end because you're not lagging. Okay. All right. One second. 
if you guys um, don't mind shutting the Wi-Fi off, if anyone's connecting to the store Wi-Fi on their phones, and we'll see if or that helps. potentially plugging in via hardline if you can. I noticed when you were adjusting the camera, we started to <laughs> feel a little issue. I, I know that shouldn't be an issue at all, but uh, you're starting to lag a little bit. Yeah, because she's um, lagging and you're not. Yeah, okay. Do you know if we have a hard line back there that's connected to the computer for their Wi-Fi or for their internet? You want to take a check, take a look and see if they have that and we can um, hook it into this computer if... Well, while I we're doing that, um, somebody had asked, Bob DeBuild is asking, did you have to take investment money um, to start your company or was it just that you sell something, you reinvest and you keep doing that over and over again? Is it lagging for you a little bit? Okay. Um, so when I first started, the first few years of being in business, it was always reinvesting the same money back into it. Um, regrettably, a couple times I've, you know, maxed out a credit card in like maybe year three or year four. Um, maybe year four, year five, I, I got a very small business loan or line of credit from the bank, but, um, but never investors. Um, I, I've been approached, but it, it just wasn't for me. I, I feel like I'd be giving away my brand and, and I, I don't. I don't know what else I'd do if I didn't do this. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right for me. Some, it, it works for some people and taking investment money isn't bad, but um, we're still a privately held family run brand. And, um, and that's that. Mm. Yeah. Great. Here's another question coming in from Mario. It's like, can we hear what you did to promote the brand at the beginning to the fashion streetwear market? Yeah. Oh, one sec. Okay. Is it lagging at all? It's okay. I think we're okay. doing a little bit better. Okay. Let's just keep rock and rolling. I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt right. you again if you start getting real choppy. Okay. Um, so when I first started the brand, ways to promote to the, the mass. Oh, Shoot. should I just not move these hands? <laughs> we're, we're right by an Apple store. I don't, I don't, we could run and grab a cord if we need to. It, it could be that our machine is lagging with him. You're talking about me and my camera, but I'm not using Wi-Fi here. This is, my camera's coming directly into you. It could be us, Mariko. Um, Can we get him plugged in? Uh, you wanna grab Aaron? You just leave it, why don't you leave it split screen and just go grab Aaron and see if we have an adapter so we can plug into. And Johnny, if there's any chance that you have a, a, a yeah. way to plug in via a hard line, that would be awesome, okay? We'll, we'll just yeah. We'll just tough through this part. That's cool. We will. We will. Yeah. Uh, I'll jump right on that question in a sec. Um, do we have the cord? If we were able to get an adapter, and check, just double check in the back of that uh, camera. There, I mean, the back of the computer. There might be something. All right. While we're while we're checking on that, uh, to answer that question, when uh, the brand was first starting. Um, I, I would go out and hand out flyers. And I think it's because I come from a music background that I'm, I'm okay with rejection and with standing out <laughs> there. And, and it really, really builds you up to, I don't know, to take a few punches and, and to, to be able to keep on going. Um, social media didn't exist. Maybe year two, year three of being in business. Um, I, I think Friendster came out and then MySpace. But um, I, I had never relied on social media. And even now, it definitely helps the brand. But I see a lot of brands that will only rely on their social media and they won't go meet people in real life. And, and I think that becomes a problem. If you can marry the two, I think there's a great synergy. But yeah, I would pass out flyers. I would, I would do pop-up shops at people's houses. I would do them at college dorms, any beauty salons, tattoo parlors. I would tell people, hey, if you or any of your friends want some free Johnny Cupcakes merch, all you have to do is host me and I'll show up and bring the pop-up shop to you. Mm. So in early days, I'd bring my you know, credit card terminal or, or a, a swiper and I would actually um, do pop-up shops at, at other people's places. And in return, I'd hook them up with some merchandise and it was great. As I opened up my own stores, I, that took a backseat, but we just brought it back and I'm actually hiring cake dealers around the US. Um, so a cake dealer is someone who we train to be an entrepreneur, an event planner, a Johnny Cupcakes pop-up shop expert. And they collaborate with local businesses and do pop-up shops where they are. And we give them 
Uh, we give them 30% or whatever they make. And anytime they make $1,000, we give them a sprinkle. And a sprinkle is a point. And at the end of the month, they cash in those points for things like business cards or an iPad or an exclusive t-shirt design that nobody else has. And uh, we really kind of help them nurture this business. I, I give them the keys to the brand. If they apply and if they are qualified and if they make it through the test pop-up shop with our secret shoppers in place, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is a scary thing to let go, but, um, but, but yeah, it's been a really, really fun project. And, um, and we're working on it now. Yeah, my friend Kyle and I are, have been working on that. And uh, we've had a few hundred people apply, but we're right now we're only onboarding one or two people a month. And uh, yeah, it's just another experiment. I, I look at all of these things as experiments and, and try to have room, financial room to be able to fail and screw up. And, and uh, because if any of these ideas hit, it could be a very important part of the Johnny Cupcakes journey. Mm -hmm. I like that you're willing to take all these chances, whether it's hiding in the bush as a leprechaun and being possibly arrested for that, or launching this entrepreneurship program to involve the community and people who love the brand, live the brand, and, and want to be become some kind of partner in the participation of spreading it around the world. I think that's fantastic. How long has that program been in effect? Um, the official Cake Dealer program has been going for a year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And. Uh, and it, it's it's been a blast. Some people are stay at home mom or dad, and they they do design work on the side, but they still need a little bit of side hustle money, and they will do a few pop up shops a month. And um, yeah, it's 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 very exciting. Great. I'm just curious. The cake dealer yeah. is that a yep. play on the Coke dealer? Like soda? <laughs> Don't play like innocent with me, Mr. Cupcakes. Um, yeah, there's a play on that. Any any time that we could mix cute with uh, dangerous or, or bad app, it's a, a gives us very fun results. Yeah. Anytime we can replace someone holding a gun with a cupcake or a whisk, or um, you know, we like you mentioned earlier for 420, we did a legalized cupcakes shirt, and uh, we replaced marijuana with sprinkles, yep. and it makes everybody smile. And you know, um, I don't know. That's, I love that. I love that. So I have a bunch of other questions for you in terms of ideas and then design. Yeah. So in the beginning, you're in this hardcore metal band and then you have this idea to, I, I love this, when people make fun of you, you turn it into something that you can profit from. And, and that's pretty consistent throughout your story. So people are calling you Johnny Come Lately, Johnny Cupcakes. You're like, no, let me make something out of that. So who designed yeah. this original logo? I, and I really like this. I did. And I did it on Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Um, and that, okay, and a lot of designers and, are cringing right now, you guys. He, he used MS Paint. Oh, it's all I knew. God. I was 18 years old. That's all I knew. And, uh, and it was a joke. I, I was not, I right. never studied business or design. I never set out to be a business owner. I, I was poking fun at a nickname in pop culture, and I made the shirt, and it made people smile. There's been variations of, you know, making sure this isn't too close to that, or it right. might look body part or um you know we've cleaned it up quite a few times over the years but sure. it's pro probably my first half dozen designs um i made on the computer and then after that i, I realized um ooh, we what have a connection you ooh. just have to get the connector we plugged ours in so it's improved so if you plug it in it'll yeah, be amazing go running over and grabbing whatever just saving the receipt all right, so while Johnny's doing this and the crack team is running across the street to the Apple store to get an adapter, this is how pro we both are, both of us. We just And this, is, this right? is a prime example of rolling with the punches. There's some right. people that might cry or swear or... Um, or do both. <laughs> or, or the screw it, we'll do it live. But, uh, and, and feel free if it does get choppy on my end, you can post images or videos, silent videos over me talking. I'll just <laughs> roll with the punches. But... Um, but what was I saying? So yeah, earlier on, I, I was making um, these shirts as a joke and, and that hobby slowly turned into a business. And as my brand developed, I, I quickly realized what my strong suits are and my weak suits are. There was one point where I was doing customer service and going to the post office and, and running my little janky warehouse and doing physical pop-up shops myself and trying to make some shirts and it just, 
all of a sudden I was, I was half stepping everything and it was physically impossible to make each of those things quality. I, I had to eventually ask for help. So um, I started collaborating with different artists and I would send them my little drawings or concepts or ways that I wanted to package things and just collaborate with them. And then eventually I had, you know, I think my first employee, first real employee was a customer um, who used to buy shirts for me on the, on the corner. And uh, he started folding t-shirts in my house when I was living at my parents at, when I was 18, 19 years old. And, and my mom eventually, you know, helped out here and there. But when I opened up the Newbury Street store and, and it was successful, I was able to hire my mom full time to be the CFO of the brand. And I was able to hire my sister who went to school for business and my dad to build stuff. So I'm not trying to do it all myself and, and, and failing. So um, it's, it's nice. And I, there have been times where I've had a much bigger staff. There's been times where I've had, you know, 12 employees in my office and 40 throughout the whole company. But after realizing how, um, how easy it is and adaptable uh, pop-up shops are, that model has been amazing for us because we can change it up. And I've personally done over 500 pop-up shops wow. around the world. And 99% of those I have not paid any rent for. Besides my t-shirts, I have not paid for physical spaces. I will utilize social media and I'll say, hey, I'm gonna do a tour around the US or I'm heading to Japan or I'm, or I'm heading to Hawaii. Um, let me know if you want me to do a pop-up shop at your house or your work or your office. Any, I'll go anywhere. So I've done pop-up shops, you know, from someone's backyard barbecue to Facebook's headquarters to an art gallery. And what they get out of it is they love that we're going in, we're going to be delivering photos, video, we're going to help cross market. And then we're also bringing probably a couple hundred Johnny Cupcakes customers that live in their state or country who have been following the brand over the years. So it is a true partnership where everybody does get something out of the, um, out of the whole deal and, and it's it's been very special and it's really that easy being a people person of course you know maybe if you have no followers and you're just starting a brand and you want to do this it might be a little bit tough but you can say to someone hey uh, if, if i can do a pop-up shop in your space um i'll, I'll give you you know 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent of whatever we make that day um I, I think in the early stages you might have to you know adapt a little bit that way um, but you can always barter products. And if it's someone at a university that's having a frat party, that's like, hey, if you'll hook my friends up with some shirts and you you just need a space, we'll do that. So little trades, it's, it's like an old fashioned way of doing business from the 1920s, just people would barter. They would they would share spices and, and, and keep on trucking. And, and I love that. Uh, uh, great yeah. suggestions there, a lot of different creative ways. And I like that you problem yeah. solve that through a number of different ways that you can conduct business so that there's really no excuse for you. If you want to get out there, even if you don't have a social media following, that you can barter and trade your way into it. Just make it a win-win situation for both parties and you're going to have something. And, yep. and that's consistent in your story from what I've been able to dig up and watch is that you're just a hustler. You're just finding a way to make things work. So before I get into what I believe, I, I want to get this answer, but before I do that, I just want to ask about your creative team. The people are actually making all the different yeah. pieces of art from the signs that we see on the walls <coughs> to the t-shirts to the packaging. Mm -hmm. You're going through a lot of materials that you're making. So can we, yep. can we get ideas to how big the team is and how they work? Sure. So the, the team changes. I, I think the longest people I've had on my team um, are, are Dale and Corey, and they both started off as customers um, that would submit fan art. Corey, I, I, I met at an event, but uh, Dale would submit fan art. Um, on our Facebook fan page. And over the years, I was like, who is this dude? And I just called him up and I said, hey, uh, you can still live where you live, but I, I want to start paying you for some of these designs. And, mm -hmm. um, and he's, he's been great. Uh, Corey's been great. And there have been times where I've had some designers in-house, but it's really, it's really tough for both parties because how is a creative person supposed to be creative when they have to wake, when they have to work nine to five and go to the same place, and how am I supposed to feel like happy and creative when I have to go check in on all of these people and trust that they're um, they're working for the best interest of the brand? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think the more that I've switched into a model of working with freelancers, it's been great because people can be stay-at-home parents and and 
they don't get paid unless the job's done. So I don't care what they do or when they do it, but you know, this is the time when the shirt has to go to print. So we'll need it by then. Um, but in my physical office right now, it is, uh, it's my mom who, who's the CFO. It's Kelly, uh, who's been a family neighborhood friend. We've known her since she was born. She lived across the street from us and she, uh, she does bookkeeping with my mom and she also, started getting into production. She's helping us get products made all over the place and, and helping our design schedule. Same thing with Mary, who does customer service. She's taught herself design over the years and she's helping with you know getting socks made and keeping our freelance designers on schedule. Um, and then we have my sister, Lindsay, who came on as human resources, which is kind of a jack, it's turned into a jack of all trades, like most small businesses, small business employees. And my sister uh, helps run our eBay vaults. So basically, instead of putting shirts on sale all the time, we'll do a couple things. One, we'll put them on our eBay vaults, maybe six months later, and they become more valuable for our customers. So we don't have to discount our products as much. And two, we'll take some of those shirts, give them to the cake dealers who sell, still sell them at a higher price point. But the cake dealer's goal is to introduce the brand to new people. So our old shirts are always new to new people. So uh, Lindsay runs a little bit of everything. She helps out with some of the pop-ups, uh, really a little bit of everything. Um, and then we have John. Uh, John Burke, is an, he's in our warehouse. He runs our warehouse, uh, does all our fulfillment. He gets help with all of us or with a, you know, uh, with a student if, if we need an extra, extra hand around the holidays. But he runs our warehouse. He does some of our product photo shoots as well. And then um, Kyle is managing all of the cake dealers. And she's like the mob boss of the cake dealers. And uh, she primarily works from home or the road, but she comes in once, sometimes twice a week. And um, that's really it. Okay, so uh, are you the person yeah. who's coming up with all the ideas and sitting around like, let's legalize this and let's call a it? As I, as I mentioned when, mm -hmm. when we first started the, the chat today, uh, it's really everybody. It's from our employees. My mom might come up with an idea, mm -hmm. my sister. Uh, a, a customer might direct message me on Instagram. Uh, someone might even send a design that is actually good, which has happened a couple of times. And we will say, hey, let's let's hire you to do this shirt. You might have to clean it up a little bit and, and thicken the lines and, and give it that 1950s Johnny Cupcakes vibe. Um, but ideas wise, it's really everybody. And, and we're almost all trained now to be like, all right, how can we make this better? We're gonna make a, this, this shirt, let's do scented ink, let's package it a weird way, let's add a scavenger hunt element to it. Um, but uh, for freelance designers, I work with uh, two sort of full-time freelance designers, uh, which is Corey and Dale, and then I work with uh, two, um, two other guys that'll hop on if we need stuff when we're in a pinch every I few see. months. So it's a team of about four creative people plus a much wider global contribution from different people who are just fans yes. and submit ideas. But, but as I mentioned, even our customer service person is as creative as all of us. They, every, everybody comes on, on board and, and helps. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the best ideas have come from at the strangest times, from the strangest predicaments, from the strangest people. Um, but yeah. And when you're traveling to Japan, say, to do a pop-up shop, who are you bringing with you to kind of help facilitate? Because I've traveled and brought a little merch with me, and it's just a pain in the yeah. butt. How are you oh, doing yeah. on the scale that you're doing it at? Well, uh, Japan was a long time ago, and I, I actually went out there for two speaking engagements, and we were able to do pop-up shops at those schools, and I brought one of my friends out with me, and an uh, old customer hosted us, and... Um, but, you know, for Hawaii, I've brought a couple of people with, I brought my mom with me because her sister was living out there then. So we turned into a family trip. Um, and then I brought uh, one person from my office. We had the shirts drop shipped there and a couple of customers uh, decided they wanted to help out and we hired them for the night. We worked with a local DJ. We turned it into a side event. We had food, we had drinks, we had music. Um, and then uh, sometimes for the, for the paid, um, pop-up shops that we'll do like we'll rent out a booth at an event that we know there's going to be a ridiculous amount of people there uh we'll you know we'll put a little bit of time and money in there rent out a vintage vehicle build a giant pastry box that's huge and with stuff like that it's really working with uh a really bizarre rolodex of people hey i remember meeting this guy who collects weird cars let's get a vintage vehicle or hey i know someone that works at 
you know, a sign shop, but they really love the brand. And they said, if we need anything, they'll work with us. Let's see if they can make a massive pastry box that is bigger than uh, a very tall basketball player. And we'll kind of put all those elements together. And with the organizational help of everyone at my office and, um, and, and really bless them because I, I'm always spitting out ideas last minute. Sometimes the best ideas come last minute and they, um, they handle everything great. I, I don't, I feel so thankful because like today I can come here and do this with you because I know the office isn't going to catch on fire. It's, it's turned into a well-oiled machine after much, much trial and error. And, um, very thankful. We have a cord right now that we're about to plug in. <laughs> All right. Um, while you do that, let me just remind people right now, they're just tuning in. Perhaps you missed the beginning of our, our live stream here. If you guys take a picture of yourself in a bathroom, preferably in a bathtub and use the hashtag Johnny cupcakes live, and you need to take a very serious photo of yourself, you know, real serious. And you get bonus points if you use toilet paper in a creative way. And I believe some people are doing that. Johnny's going to go ahead and pick some people at the end of the show to give some yep. really cool merch to. And I want to use this opportunity to show some of the stuff that Johnny sent to me. Check this out, you guys. Not only am I rocking the t-shirt right now, he sent us a bunch of socks. Check that out. Okay. And then I have a few shirts I have yet to open. We'll see what we're going to do with those. I don't have to check the input, right? And then pins and cards, playing cards. Hey, do you want me to turn off Wi-Fi real quick to connect to this cord? You know what? You're or doing great, dude. No, you just plug it in. All you have to do is plug it in. It should auto detect. Just plug it in. I don't just, have to touch yeah. anything. I don't have to change the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and it's been pretty smooth so far. So whatever has okay. happened on both your end and my end has helped uh, tremendously. You've been coming in super right. smooth. All right? Okay. And thanks to my man, Dave, who's been helping me behind the scenes. Dave, if you see anything funky, feel free to come over here and, and <laughs> get on down. Uh, yep, it's live, and that's how we roll. But, uh, you know, I, I stumbled across you I, just I, a few times a year, and it's starting to turn into a few times a week since, since I've, you know, been subscribed or, or uh, pals with you on LinkedIn. Um, I really enjoy your, your videos and your talks and the amount of information that, that you put out there, and I, I think it's very helpful. And I, I will find my – I don't normally do this with, with any videos besides finding a music playlist, but I will, I will play your videos in the background and, and listen to – some of the guests on there talking about, you know, how to get a bigger budget out of people or right. how to negotiate or, or, um, you know, little things like that. So I just wanted to thank you and your team. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no and that's kind of how we met and how this show is happening because you're active on social media. We exchange information and then sooner or later we have this thing. Now I have to say too, I'm just like, it's a, like a love festival here, but as I dig deeper and deeper into your story and how you do things, I'm just blown away. And I feel like, man, we, as a creative person myself who went to school for this, you're like showing us up right now. And I, I have to kind of rethink how we're delivering on our brand experience. So having said that, I don't know if you can see my screen, but I'm going to show these, these slides about the work and I'll talk it through so that you know, because yeah. it's your, your material. So you talk a lot about packaging 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 yes. and people don't understand that when when you say it's 38 bucks for a t-shirt that's a lot for a lot of people but the amount of care love and and the just the customer experience that you deliver is beyond what anybody else is doing i can understand why you have such fanatical followers and customers i look at this this is a really creative way to package t-shirts you rolled it up put it into a tube and this takes me back to my childhood chasing after the ice cream man these push pops so it's called a oh. pop-up tea there's a stick hanging out of it, yep. and it's so rad. Now, now, just so you guys understand the scale of this, because it's misleading, here's a picture of some fans that are rocking the push pop, and it's really cool. So I'm going to take you through a couple of other things that Johnny's doing. That's why I had now, so real, real quick, with, yeah. with that ice cream one, we, we packaged ice cream-themed T-shirts in ice cream containers. Oh, I know. Here it is. Boom. But we decided to, to, to rent out ice cream trucks in different cities. And we rebranded the ice cream trucks. We gave out real ice cream with every t-shirt purchase. And we even went as far as not telling people where we were gonna be until last minute because we wanted the experience to be so authentic that our customers were chasing us like little kids chasing an ice cream truck. And nobody cared. And, and with these, we charged a higher price point. I, I was, I believe between 50 and $75, mm -hmm. but they sold out at every stop. Not one person complained. They weren't, even thinking about buying they were so happy to meet fellow johnny cupcakes t-shirt collectors in line to, to get some ice cream to find go on a scavenger hunt they were getting 
hit in the face with all these different types of experiences um, through the art of, of a t-shirt and a team coming together with a bunch of a uh, bunch of fun ideas. Mm. R- amazing ideas, super fun, and even the graphics. I'm I'm looking at this one that's limited edition exclusive t-shirts, and it's like an ice cream push uh, bar, like like an Eskimo pie or something. Just yep, the, that the, one we uh, we collaborated with the junk food brand, and um, oh, I know those guys. Yeah, yep, fantastic um, design there. Great but, topography. Uh, but yeah, we. You know, from that, I don't know if you have some slides of the Halloween stuff that we've done in the past. I don't know if I have that, but I have. Let me just bring you to the next one here, which is <laughs> check this out, you guys. He's got a whole Johnny Cupcakes specially packed limited edition Chinese takeout box. And it's like fully like embracing the rickshaw kind of style typography. And then and here's the, the T-shirt. The thing is, we, we didn't just print on an existing box. We wanted to get them made from scratch to make them enormous and and to just go through that process mm-hmm. of finding out how to make a weird box like that come to life with our own size specifications for the shirts. Now, when you do something like this, this is why I was asking you before. Do you do any kind of internal testing or using social media to see like, are people gonna like this or you just go with your gut and you just make them and you know, a couple hundred sell where they don't, then that's your own thing. A lot of time it's, we go with our gut because you know, it's a lot of time, it's hard. Some of these ideas come last minute. We find out that it's national cookie day and we have to get cookie cutters manufactured because that would be a pretty sweet thing to release around that time. Um, but, but sometimes, like we have uh, one customer, uh, we'll give a shout out to Lloyd. He's over in England. He really wants us to make a Bob Ross t-shirt or, <laughs> or inspired t-shirt. He, he asked me once a day and I still love him with every, every ounce of my, my heart. Um, but for me, I don't wanna just do that. If, if we do that, I think we need to come up with our own paint set. And we need to release them while having a painting class in the store. And when you buy a shirt, it comes with an app. Oh, no. Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, I'm here. Can you hear me? OK, you're back. OK. All right. Well, it's, it's, I was going to panic. Unstable. Um, let me see if I need to change that. You said turn Wi-Fi off or open up. Um, one sec. Open up. Create, well, um, while you do that, there's yeah. a lot of like cake dealers, I think, in the comment section right now, showing a lot yeah, of love. So Ginger saying, "Woo, cake dealers unite!" And Caitlin Sims <laughs> is saying, "Hey, Kyle, uh, to be uh, to be a cake dealer with us, a heart there." And Robert Loyal or Lo- Loyal, I don't know if you know Robert. He's like, I don't prom- mind promoting J- Johnny Cupcakes on my channel. LOL. Oh, very nice. Thank you, guys. I need to. I do have a YouTube channel, which a lot of these releases have been documented, so you can pull some inspiration from there. Um, I definitely need to, to be a little bit more active, but um, but yeah, I, I yeah, we try to document all of our releases on there, and especially on Instagram too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just hop, hop on Matthew, over. Are you, are you looking at chat? I need to. Ch- so are you looking at YouTube chat or Facebook chat? Yeah. Okay. Anything come out that you see? You want to talk about? Mm. We'll hey, if I, if I turned on off Wi-Fi for a second and if it did boot me out, is it that easy for me to come back in? It should be. Okay. All right. Uh, the audience is nervous as am I right now. Audience, I'm not going anywhere. If I do, I'll be right back. I used to be a magician and, and this is just, you know, right in my territory. Here, here, hop. Brian Villa saying amazing stuff, Johnny. Yep. Uh, Uh-oh. Okay, what? what's that? Oh, just clarification for the comments that they post on Instagram or Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, if you guys are joining us late and you want to have a chance at winning some super cool merch from Mr. Johnny Cupcakes himself, just make sure you take a picture in the bathroom, preferably in the bathtub, with a serious face on. Put your serious face on. Bonus points for uh, toilet paper, creative use of toilet paper. Nothing dirty. Keep your clothes on, you guys. Hashtag Johnny Cupcakes Live. And you can post on both Instagram and on Twitter. And Johnny will randomly select uh, some winners to give some really cool stuff to. Now, um, okay, can you see me all right? Yeah, we can see you. Everything's still live. It's all okay. still good. We good? Shut my off right now. We are hardwired officially. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so well done, team. Well done. Okay. Thank you. There's a strange question in here, and I'm going to ask it. It could be a troll kind of question. I'm not sure. Somebody asked about your prom. 
my prom. I, I, you know, I didn't have a prom. I went to a charter school. I had a hard time learning in, in uh, public school. So I went to a charter school, completely changed my life, smaller classrooms, project based. But basically we had, we didn't really have a prom because uh, my graduating class was like seven or eight people. And, you know, you, you can't really have a prom with that, but we had some <laughs> fun field trips. Um, I've been asked to go to other proms, but it was as I was an older human and I just didn't feel, uh, it felt a little too creepy to say yes, although I would have loved to, to have made someone's day, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's really it. Look, okay, and, and, you're painting a picture here. You are. I just want to make sure that this is true, that yeah. no, no parting, stayed away from the drinking and assume everything else that goes with that. No girls, yep. like you're just like business. I'm just going to make my business and play music. And then when the business took off, you stopped doing the band thing, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, there was a time where I, I, I did, I had a girlfriend when I was younger and I just, <laughs> um, you know, it, she wasn't super supportive. And then, you know, she ended up hooking up with one of my friends while I got my wisdom teeth pulled out. It was like the worst, worst week of my life. But although it was the worst week of my life, sometimes those negative moments really bring clarity because it made me not care. It, it, it made me realize I have to get my own act together before taking on the responsibilities of another human's emotions. And um, so well I, I just need focus. And, you know, there, there had been times where I'd go to bed spooning with my laptop sad or a romantic comedy would come on TV and it would feel like a ghost <laughs> is punching in the gut. But, um, you know, I, it, it all worked out now. I'm, I'm You're happily, fine now, right? happily married and, and I'm just, um, I'm finding a good, a good balance. Good. And it's, it, it's still tough sometimes, but, but it's so important to, it's tricky. You need to put everything into your business, especially during the early ages and the early stages. But you do need to have a real life too, because it makes work fun and vice versa. And um, I, I put this off for a while, for a long time, because I really had to get this thing up off the ground. And, and I think because I, I had so many employees at one point, I made up jobs for people. I made up jobs that didn't exist because I, I wanted to. I had this idea of building this like fun family, and even if it meant making very poor financial decisions um, with with not much leadership, I, I still did it because I just. I don't know. I was just young and, and I guess uneducated. You know, those are some things I could have learned at school or I could have learned through your YouTube channel if, if it was around back then. Um, but, you know, you, you look at these things as learning lessons and you just you keep building and switching things around. And if something doesn't feel right with your company, make those changes or ask for help. People are there to help. You, you have to ask for it. Watch some YouTube videos, watch some TED Talks, read some books, attend some lectures, network. You know, if you don't put yourself out there, nobody's going to know that you need the help and, and guidance. Hey, perfect. So Andrew McGee is reminding, like, he's very active on this comment thread right now. Andrew, <laughs> what's up, my friend? You know Andrew? I don't, but I'm, cheers. <laughs> uh, cheers Newfound friend. So he's oh. reminded me to ask you this question. That this, is, this is one I really want to know the answer to, which is, how are you dealing with licensing or sometimes doing parody things and not getting the official license? I know you do both, right? We do both. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started the brand, we did a lot of the, my brand was based off of parodies. I, right. I poking fun at pop culture, putting a cupcake there instead of a skull. And um, as the brand grew, when I was younger, I wanted to collaborate with all these companies and nobody cared because I had no value to give. And when you do a collaboration, oftentimes you have to guarantee that a company is going to make Ten to thirty thousand dollars off of the licensing fees that they collect from you over uh, an agreed set amount of time, and you have to pay that up front. So when you are a independent, family-run brand like myself, um, that could really hurt your cash flow. It could hurt anybody's cash flow, and then the products and the waiting and the waiting and the approval process. So um, it is worth it to do it when you can do it. When I was younger, the the best collaboration that I was able to do was just working with the local pizza place and saying, hey, I've got a Halloween release coming up. Can we please have 10 pizzas to give out for free? Um, in return, we'll put your logo on our flyers. And they jumped on it. Anybody can do that. Anytime you're event planning, get free drinks, free food. If you play your cards right, people will even pay you 
to put their logos on those flyers. Um, we should get into that in a little bit about, about sponsorship and, and ways to barter with people. Um, but going back to, what were we talking about again? Licensing. like Licensing, yes. So as the brand grew, um, people did start caring about what we did. So I was able to do some licensing deals and I was able to save up enough money to officially do those. So the first licensing deal was actually uh, with Warner Brothers, with Looney Tunes. And I had a, uh, I had a Batman theme design and a Joker one. And while I was out opening up um, our, you know, our operations on the West Coast, we had an eight year residency shop over in West Hollywood. Right before that shop opened, I received a call from, um, from Warner Brothers licensing department. How many of these shirts did you make? And where did you sell them to? And why did you do this? And I was like, we made like, like a hundred shirts and we didn't sell them to any stores and they're all gone. And um, so I can't like burn them because there's nothing to burn. And they just kept asking questions. They were very intrigued. Mm. At the end of the conversation, they started laughing and saying, this is so funny. So you're telling me you have bakeries that don't sell food and you put the shirts in. They're like, this is great. We, you know what? We're going to let this slide. We want to collaborate with you. Come to our studios and, and let's, let's work something out. And of course, I called up my designer, Clark, at the time. And I said, dude, uh, Warner Brothers really wants to talk to the person who submitted the art files. It sounds serious, and I feel so bad that I played that joke on him because I waited 24 hours to <laughs> to tell him. Um, but, it, but anyways, we ended up collaborating with them. We we did Looney Tunes property, and we um, and then we also said, hey, we need to make this release even more exciting. So, although we're going to sell these shirts in our store and online, can you help us out with some giveaways? So they donated um, 20 cartoon cells to our store with letters of authenticity uh, that we gave out. And we made a little grab bag for the first 20, 30 people. And so that made people want to get out. They made people want to wait in line. And when people see other people waiting in line, they jump in line too, right. or they take photos, or they look up Johnny Cupcakes on online. So for me, I purposely opened my store during big releases later in the day for two reasons. One. As you know from today, we know that things can go wrong. So anytime you could buffer out that space, it's important. So we'll try to open our stores at one, sometimes 3 p.m. Or if it's a spooky release, we'll open at night when it gets dark. Um, and then the other thing, number two, is as I said, when people see other people waiting in line, they either jump in line or our customers act as brand ambassadors and share the Johnny Cupcake story with all these strangers that are curious why people are waiting in line. So I will open in the middle of the day on a weekend when the most people are out walking around Newbury Street in Boston, um, because I know that's when I'm going to get the most uh, real life impressions. And uh, anytime I do that for a month or two after, we have strangers that will, will just overflow the store uh, with their presence asking, hey, what was that line? There's people queuing up last month, last week. What's this place all about? So it, it's really helped. All right. So. It sounds to me like you were, if, if anybody hangs around with you long enough, they know you're always kind of like uh, pushing the line and joking around with them. So you, you, do you ever run into a problem where, where somebody that works for you doesn't take you seriously? Like when you're really oh, yeah. being serious? It, uh, that is probably one of my biggest failures is not putting my business hat on, um, trusting everybody and, and having too much fun. Um, that is definitely, I, that's really screwed me up, mm. you know? I, and I almost feel pathetic, like looking at my older self, um, because I, I was just a young guy that was trying to bring everyone on the ride. And, and I just wanted everyone in my company to be friends. You know, I'd fly people out to celebrate Christmas with me with, you know, weeks before Christmas, I'd fly out all of my employees from my London shop at the time and my, my uh, Los Angeles residency shop. And it was a very nice thing to do. But um, it, it, it was also irresponsible. We just had like our neighbors watch the stores and, and teach them in 24 hours how to run our <laughs> register. And, and, and I, I, I also, I had my office. I, I was always, I felt so guilty to stand behind someone's computer and ask them to go through what they do in the, in, in the eight hours they're working for me. I, I never wanted to do that because I didn't want anyone to feel like I didn't trust them. But I didn't do that for years. And I found I had some, I had some employees that, you know, 
we, we cut our, our company down a lot and, um, and we're getting 10 times as much stuff done with twice as less people. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm looking back and I'm like, man, I, it, but it was my fault because I never set expectations with people and I never took my silly personality off. And I did once in a while, but I, I was screwing around so much that I could have been a little bit more um, profitable and a little bit more um, business oriented at a younger age, but it's all good. It's all memories. And, and I wouldn't be here without all, all of those people. Uh, it was just a different time, a uh, different time and very, very thankful for, for that time. It, it does hold a special place in the Johnny Cupcakes history. Awesome. So I, I think I have two more questions and we're going to go into lightning round because I've, I've taken up a lot of your time and, oh, and no, that's fine. Okay. Awesome. So you have some spectacularly amazing, crazy ways to promote. I, I saw on your deck before where you actually did this thing where you were in a coffin and you come out. I don't know if it's a Halloween related, <laughs> but you rented a hearse and the whole bit. So the question for you here is... Wait, wait, wait. S- side note. I yes. just came up with a cool idea. We should start a cough drop brand called Coffins and they could be shaped in a coffin box and have a little dry- <laughs> vampire. In the front of it. All right. I mean, All right. So... I just wonder if you've ever come up with an idea like that you you push the boundary of good taste and decency too far, or have you never crossed that line? Listen, I, I screw up every day. I definitely do not have it figured out. I have a couple things figured out, but I I embrace failures and, and experiments. Um, so I'll, I'll share a couple with you. So yes, one time okay. was great. We've done Halloween theme shirts. We've released at nighttime to go along with the spooky effect. We even went as far as making YouTube trailers for Halloween movies that don't even exist, like Count Spatula, <laughs> Rise of the Two-Headed Zombie Chef. And then we packaged those t-shirts in VHS tapes. Not only that, we showed Halloween movies in the windows. We rented out a popcorn machine. Um, we had our employees dress up like zombies that night. And then I went as far as renting out, at some of these past releases, I've gone as far as renting out a hearse and a coffin from a creepy guy on Craigslist for 220 bucks. And I will personally get delivered when the doors open at nighttime. It's cheaper than advertising. It's cheaper than traditional marketing. If you saw a hearse and a coffin rolling up in front of a bakery that doesn't even sell real food, you would be so baffled that you just can't even move. You have to figure it out before you continue the rest of your night. So we've had some events where there's been a line of customers on the other side of the street filled with people trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And, um, and it's been great. Mm. So uh, some things that have failed, uh, I did a early April Fool's Day joke. And man, I got this new camera and I was like, I'm going to make a YouTube video every day. And I'm in Los Angeles. And I'm like, what can I do? Okay, I know that a, a customer of mine, a good friend, uh, Garrett, he, he now does, uh, he does stunts for movies. He's a stunt coordinator. And I called him up, I was like, hey, I've got this idea. Can you get some stunt men over to my shop or stunt women, uh, any stunt people? Uh, and, and can you also let me know where I can buy fake glass? Um, because I, I definitely wanna set up a brawl in my store. I had an idea of having people walk inside and say, Johnny Cupcakes, there's no cupcakes here. Well, this is so stupid. What, you know, and then they'll start messing up the hats and, and trying to start a fight. Yeah. So we did that. We did it all in one you take. And, fight. I was, and I was pretending I was on my, if you look up, you know, huge brawl, Johnny Cupcakes, LA fight or brawl, it'll come up. But here I am doing a vlog and I'm like, yeah, this is the shop. And then these people come in in the background and it was like perfectly timed. The brawl was great. There was some real blood and there was some fake blood and it was a blast. Now, the one thing that I failed to do since there was a bit of a time difference, I forgot, I didn't want to call home and wake up my parents and say, hey guys, I came up with this last minute idea. So my mom woke up to this video and she thought that, that we got hurt and that there was this big fight going on. And I felt like, oh my God, I, my stomach, like I feel like puking right now. I, I just, uh, I should have been more aware and I should have said something. I had friends checking in on me everywhere and it was not, now I'm screwed if anybody murders me because no one will ever believe it. But, uh, but it's it, a dangerous it, it, precedent. That, that's an idea that has gone wrong. Of okay. course, we've had products that have gone wrong. Like I've made the mistake of, um, of getting beach towels made through a company that made our handbags because they said we can make anything. Mm-hmm. 
we got a thousand towels in, which was a lot of money at the time. It was really, you know, this was in the early, early stages, not the towels we have now, but we got them in their beautiful oversized towels. And then we started getting returns. Anytime someone dried off, the ink would come off on their body. Oh my and, God. And that, so that was a big one. We've had umbrellas that were great, but every other umbrella would entirely shoot off like a, the, <laughs> like, like the penguin's weapon in Batman. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I mean, I did a, I did a, I did a social experiment. I love doing these. When I travel, I'll say, Hey, it's Johnny cupcakes. I'm in San Francisco. If you meet me at this pizza shop at 4 PM, I'm going to treat you to dinner. All you have to do is show up wearing a Johnny cupcake shirt. And I'll think maybe five or six people will show up. Maybe 12. If I'm lucky, hundreds of people will show up have showed up and I've had to bring them into the park. We almost got in trouble with the city from taking up the sidewalks. And then I just ended up feeding people pizza the entire day and evening in, in San Francisco. But I, I think one that was a little bit more tricky. Um, I mean, anytime we have a release or a pop-up shop, we have to, we have to delicately make friends with the neighbors and say, Hey, we might, we don't know, but we might have a lot of people show up. Um, just want to give you a heads up. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, cool. That's great. But then the night before people will start camping out for a t-shirt release and all of a sudden they're not cool with it anymore. And we have to last minute find stanchions or get a security person or have an extra employee on board that is, you know, um, watching that spot to make sure nobody blocks someone's entrance. There's been other people who have been like, this is a great idea. There's people in front of my shop. Finally, I can hand out coupons and, and invite them in. Um, but that is few, few and far between. Um, so the shooting umbrellas thing, I mean, you could also look at it like Johnny's just having fun with us. Some of them actually explode and shoot out. And yeah. congratulations, you got the special limited edition <laughs> version. That is true. And on that note, while I'm holding on to my water bottle, um, my friend Dave, who's been helping me out today, he's been, uh, he's been great with this one video that we did. Uh, so basically, when you order something, you know, when you start a t-shirt brand, it's it's so attractive to make more than just t-shirts because you want to prove to the world that you're not just another t-shirt brand. So you'll try to push your boundaries and, and spend all the money you have and, and really make big mistakes. And, but basically we had to order these water bottles and we had to order a thousand or 2000 of them in order to get something custom made. We got them in, they sold okay, but they, they were not a big seller. So I came up with an idea let's let's have a contest we'll call it the johnny cupcakes water bottle contest and you could win a, a 500 dollars gift card the only way you have to participate is just by submitting a video of what you can do with a johnny cupcakes water bottle um oh. and, and team um feel free to look up johnny cupcakes <laughs> water bottle contest on on youtube and you'll find the official video so what was great about this is People were making content for us. And the only way that they could be a part of this contest is to buy a water bottle. All of a sudden, we did not have to discount those water bottles. We could sell them at full price. We sold through them really quickly once we launched this contest. Um, I think the biggest mistake that I made during that was, um, was we made a really cool video. And I don't know that anyone made one that, there was a couple really great ones, but we really went all out. Like I was using these as nunchucks and weapons and um, Dave did an amazing job and it looks like a video from the 1950s and it had we even hired a voiceover actor. So, you know, I might have might have spent a little bit over my budget for that. But um, my problem is I, I never have really set budgets and have been that organized. I've just kind of been like, let's do something fun. And um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But having a uh, low overhead really helps with a buffer for those potential mistakes and experiments that you might have with your brand. Mm -hmm. That sounds very much in keeping with yeah. your mantra, do more of what makes you happy. So it seems yeah. to me like you're, you're an ideas first kind of guy and let's make the business make sense after the fact, but, uh, you, yes, you but, but I will say I am, I am so thankful and I would not be here if it was not for teamwork mm -hmm. and collaboration with other people whether they're in the office or outside of the office as freelancers, um, they've really helped me get better about planning and, and really make this thing work. So 
Um, it's definitely not just me. It has turned into a family run business. And, and, and when I say family, it's not just blood. It's also, um, it's also, you know, people who've been with us for the long haul. Super. So for this next segment, I'm going to ask you five words. It's free association. And Johnny can't see the words, you guys, but we'll cut to it in a second so you guys can see it. Let me get the game show bell on. Is that the one? All right. There we go. So I'm going to say something and you can say whatever comes to your mind. Are you ready, Johnny? Oh, God. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So your favorite band? Favorite band, Deftones. Nice. Let me give you a... Oh, where's my dinger? Okay. Uh, favorite city? Favorite city besides Boston, I'm going to say Austin, Texas right now. All right. Uh, any reason why Austin, of all the places you've been? Oh, uh, the, the, the food, the vibe, you could just walk around and, and, and it's great. And I have a, my, my wife and I have been going there and we have some great memories. So it's a very special place. Great. Uh, who is your hero? My hero, I, I'd, I'd say my parents. And, and, and after my parents, I'd say uh, Pee Wee Herman before the whole movie theater thing. And I would say uh, uh, James Bond. All right. That's an interesting mix of heroes there. But it's interesting you say Pee Wee Herman because I get the whole Pee Wee Herman factory. It just It's, it's oh. kind of, I get it. Totally makes sense. Except for the whole thing. Uh, yeah. A guilty indulgence. Oh, wait, wait, hold guilty on, hold on, I messed up. Okay, no, fine. I messed up my own order. Guilty indulgence first, then. Guilty indulgence? Oh, my God. Guilty, like things that I feel bad about. I Did love you? butter. I love. I put more butter on my bread <laughs> than, um, than the bread. Really? Yeah, All that's right. my favorite part about going out. And then if there's salted butter, you could put, add your own salt. If there's truffle butter, if there's um, honey butter, it um, makes me feel really good. <laughs> Okay, out of order, but here's the last one for you. A regret. Uh, regret is, is, as you mentioned before, um, being a little too goofy earlier on uh, behind the scenes. I, I wish that I put my business hat on. And I think that my train of thought has uh, shifted for the better as far as being a, a little bit more organized and uh, a little bit more serious was when I... Um, was when I got married. I, I I met an auditor, and she is she she cha she changed my life in so many ways. I used to be late for everything. I um, you know I just and I, I I never questioned people's actions. I, I would always think of the best in everybody, mm. and I still do that. I haven't lost hope of that, but um, but I, but I will ask some some serious questions, and I I. Like I wasn't experienced. I, I did, like I said, I didn't go to school for business or any of this stuff. So I just was a goofy dude that had a t-shirt brand, has a t-shirt brand, and 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 uh, I, I don't regret anything. But if you know, that's that's something that I think I failed at is um, having that balance of fun and serious earlier on. Perfect. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the show. Is that is it? Is it time for us to wrap up the show, you guys? I can I can hear my stomach going crazy right now. I'm hey I'm I'm <laughs> you are a trooper the, man. <laughs> we're set up with HD so you whatever you want I'm here for you. Ma Matthew doesn't want me to end it on the the the, the regrets. Let's end it on a positive thing. Matthew, what's yeah, the best question you're seeing on social media right now? Maybe we we it's do just that. like for anyone who's starting their own t-shirt company today. Yeah. What bit of advice would he give them? Perfect. All right. So let me just relay that conversation to you. Yeah. For anybody, and this is how we're going to end the show, you guys. For anybody that wants to start a t-shirt com company today or a brand, what's, what advice would you give them? Oh, my goodness. That's a strong so question to it, end it on, right? <laughs> it is. I mean, it, it is a very strong question because there's a lot of people starting t-shirt brands. Um, I could tell you a thousand things to do, and I could tell you a thousand things not to do. Um, I think it's a very poor strategy to follow and unfollow people every single day and mm. not leave your, and you think that's how you're going to build an audience on social media. And then you think those people are actually going to buy your products. It, you are wasting a lot of time and it's, and it's making yourself look silly. So I would say, do not do that. Um, I would say, try not to add the word clothing at the end of your name. I think it's unnecessary. We've done it once in a while. I used to do it in the beginning. Um, but it, it's just too much words, uh, keeping it short and sweet. Uh, I would say 
you know, definitely make time to network. Like I said, don't do everything online. Uh, digi digital is great, but it, it's only uh, more powerful and, and the most powerful when you can marry it with real life relationships. Um, and then with a t-shirt brand or with, with whatever company you start, uh, I would say the biggest thing is making sure that you're doing at least 12 things that separate you from everybody else, whether it's your name, your packaging, your story, the type of events you do, the type of marketing you do. I'd say stay transparent, show your, tell your story all the time, um, have fun. I think good humor and good design are contagious. They make people excited. So you don't have to be the most serious company, um, but you have to be original because people will call you out. And, and, and with any company, you have to be original, you have to be authentic and, um, yeah, there's so, there's so much more. I'm actually working on a book right now, um, and I'm I'm type I'm writing most <laughs> of it on a typewriter. Um, but it's going to be uh, over a hundred short stories of um, helpful business tips for people mm. and, and things that I've learned from, succeeded from, or screwed up with that I think will help a lot of people. Um, and then you mentioned earlier, briefly mentioned the speaking engagements. I, if you ever are around, sometimes I'll rent out a movie theater and put up tickets online and, and do an event for people. Um, so sometimes I have talks that are open to the public that will have customers come out and I'll, I'll hang out as late as I can to, uh, to help them with their businesses. And then other times they're, they're more private events, but um, whatever I can do, I run my own Instagram and Twitter for the worst or the better. So I can't get back to everybody, but these live streams are a great way to tackle a lot of questions at once. And if you are following me on social media, shoot me a question, keep it at one sentence. It'll help me write back immediately. And if I don't write back, send it again four days later and keep <laughs> that forever until I do. But the best way to talk to me is really to just to, to come meet me in person and I'll, um, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll give you whatever I can give you to help you out. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you the cash register sound effect for that. Beautifully done. I wrote down yes. two things uh, and I was going through your list. It's to, yeah. uh, in terms of advice is to find your story, to tell your story. And that's really important. It, what separates you from being just another fill in the blank, another t-shirt oh. company, another soda company. And to create meaningful experiences around the way that your customers interact with you. And I think you've done a, a tremendous job on that. And I do want to say this. Uh, in yeah. terms of if you have a speaking engagement in Los Angeles and you're going to talk about entrepreneurship or how to launch a brand, we'd love to participate in some capacity. So let, let me know. Yeah. And when you launch no, your I, book I love that. and when you launch your book, also let us yep. know because we'd be happy to share that on our social media channels as well. So, guys, we're going to cut to the slide before we officially say goodbye to Johnny. So there's Johnny's information, you guys. There's the, the logo, Johnny Cupcakes there. And you can hit him up on Instagram and in Twitter at Johnny Cupcakes. And for the competition that we're talking about one last time before we get out of here, hashtag and YouTube. If I, if YouTube I as well. How, how do we do that? Like, That's tricky. I, you can't, but if, if I can pull <laughs> inspiration, uh, if I can pull inspiration from you and your team, it's, it's being more active on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it's YouTube slash Johnny cupcakes. Um, I think. Oh, okay. So youtube.com slash somewhere. I think you have to add the letter C slash Johnny cupcakes, right? Yeah. All right, and then the hashtag is Johnny Cupcakes Live, and I just want to mention our, our our next guest coming up on Wednesday is David Breyer. It's a brand intervention on Wednesday, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is David Breyer. He's going to talk about branding, so we're going to dive more into this. It's just a sneak peek, and let's let's uh, get back to Johnny here. Johnny, I just want to thank you on behalf of the entire Dream Team. It's a it's a skeletal crew that we run here for the broadcast, but I want to thank you. Thank you so much on behalf of our entire audience for making this happen, and thank I'm, you I'm excited to see crazy photos of people being serious in a bathroom oh, yeah you know what let's while we're can live, we do that let's, let's okay let's search it we'll, all right uh, you search it and, and uh, maybe you can share some with us and uh, you <laughs> stick around a little bit I'm gonna officially wrap the show but we'll still be on air and you can still comment Johnny yes. so keep looking all right so I'm gonna do what we need to do is end the show so okay oh, I, oh, I know I keep coming up with ideas go ahead uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but my store, my, my store, not only do we put shirts in refrigerators, but we make it smell like real frosting. And um, it, we've had some people come in, a, a friend of mine, I, I told him that we mixed vanilla frosting with white paint. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, if you lick the wall, you could taste it a little <laughs> bit. And he, he licked the wall, but um, oh, no. we, we actually put uh, these car fresheners sometimes in our heater vents. And we, I used to buy so many of these fresheners that I started just making my own 
car fresheners that we now sell. And then we package our, uh, our t-shirts and pastry boxes. So you get that, you leave here pranking other people as you're walking down the street. So it works out. But anyways, <laughs> sorry, forgot about that. All I'm right. going to look up. So contest. you look it up and we'll hang out for a second, but I'm going right. to do the, I'm going to roll the end titles here. So let's thank uh, Johnny guys. Uh, there's only, you can only hear me clapping, but there's all, there's two other people here next to me. So we're going to clap. Oh, you know what? I have a real applause track. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Let's get out of here and let's do that. You got some...